any opening reflections if anyone has any. I um, would invite anyone else to. I think the mind would be dark with all the mm. news from all the anti-transgender and all that kind of stuff. It's just. Does anyone have anything uplifting? Yeah, yeah. So I read this book and went to the talk by the author called Mr. and Mrs. Prince, How an Extraordinary 18th Century Family Moved Out of Slavery and Into Legend. Mm -hmm. And she, uh, the book was lovely. It's it's about a uh, uh, two individuals who came over from Africa, were sold as slaves, and how they they ended up marrying, but their journey, and they were in this area. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot about how different slavery is here than the big plantations in the South. Mm -hmm. um, but they were able to, the, the author was able to piece together their lives from all of the different records. Mm -hmm. And they they got free and they had six kids. And it's mm -hmm. very, it was very I find part of this journey is to be educated, be aware, know the history. Mm -hmm. And my ancestors are from this area, and maybe they, you know, who knows? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I it was it was a joy to attend. Mm -hmm. I Thank so, you. that's a nice yeah, mm -hmm. Um, I'll jump since I think we have a pretty full agenda. Um, clerk's report would be the minutes. Um, we all go through those. They looked good to me. Yes. Do I hear a motion to accept motion or to modify? Accept. Motion to accept as prepared by Sarah. Sarah. Not by Sarah, I'm sorry. That's right. So please, please scrutinize. Yeah. <laughs> I looked at it prior to coming. It was it was last month that we missed one. Yeah, yeah we missed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very I would second the motion. Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor? Yes. Unanimous? Um, yes. Fine. Should we jump um, to entertain our guests? Yeah. Yes. New business A, 5A. Okay. Other ideas for honoring GLBTQ, or was LGBTQ? Anyway, Pride Month, June Highway Pride Events, Northampton. We have seen that come, and Greenfields is okay. Um, we want to. Jump into that or no? I'm aware. Okay. I'm moving that we, that we, while we have uh, Dr. McKenzie right. and Sarah Jaybrick here, that we go to New Business A, mm -hmm. yeah. meet with them. We yeah. can return back to those things. Sure. There. That yeah. sounds good. I second that. <laughs> I approve <laughs> how it works. All right. Yeah. Did you do it right? <laughs> good. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. So, Hi, everyone. Hey. Um, well, I can just talk a little bit. I, um, you know, as a parent of two kids at Hadley Elementary, when I got Sarah's email about her um, work in the district and serving families. I was just really excited to, um, to just hear more about the efforts that are happening at the district level. And so um, out of that desire to just sort of make connection, reached out to her and then um, 
you know, Dr. McKenzie was invited as well and, and just would love to hear about, um, so I'm new to the district, my family and I moved to Hadley in um, June of last year. Mm -hmm. So just would love to hear about sort of what the district is doing and, um, and then to also just think about how our committee could support those efforts and to sort of um, continue to build relationship and community around uh, DEI issues and to think about how we can be um, mm -hmm. allies and supports in that. Uh, and a side, a side note, when, when I, my husband and I took our son to the Hopkins Academy, like open house, I was seeing all the books on the tables in the English classroom, and it was just a lovely display of literature by diverse authors. And I spoke to the English faculty and said, did you get much pushback? I'm going to ask kind of a political question. Mm -hmm. and, and they said, yes, we do regularly mm -hmm. about um, prioritizing the works of authors of color and LGBTQ authors. And so that to me was just another signal that I, both on this committee and as a parent in the district, that I want to be um, uh, an outspoken voice or a voice of support for educators and administrators in the district as well that are working on these issues. So I'll stop talking, but I'm very yeah. glad that you're both here. Well, Sarah, I will encourage you to introduce yourself and to speak about your experience thus far. In fairness to Sarah, Ms. Jabber has uh, started working with us. I feel like I've known you forever, but I think mm -hmm. it's only been since April, maybe <laughs> March. <laughs> oh, wow. But no. Uh, so just recently started. So I want to make sure that I know if I were in Sarah's shoes, mm -hmm. I might be thinking right now, really, why is the superintendent asking me to kick this off? I have worked here for like 10 weeks, but doing excellent, excellent work. And uh, I invite you to, and I can fill in sure. nine years of history holes of what's going on in the district. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So it's nice to meet everyone virtually. I do live in West Springfield, so I'm a little bit far away. So so I'm here via Zoom, but in the future, I'd love to be there in person as well. So, um, but yes, I have been working here since like the very, very end of February, I think. So a little bit, a little bit longer than that, but it's been good so far. I think one of the things that I love about Hadley so far is that there's just so much encouragement from everyone to make effort as well so it's it's been really good so far and I think we're making progress even in the short time that I've been here I've seen a lot of changes even within the students so I primarily am working in Hopkins Academy right now that's where my office is um, but I have been going over to the elementary school here and there to sort of help out where where I need to. Um, a lot of what I do is investigations of sorts into situations that happen where there's inequity of some kind. So, you know, whether it's been uh, biased language used or bullying or things like that. So anywhere where that inequity takes place, I do investigations and then use that information to figure out the best way to create less of a divide after the fact. So in our corrective actions, we uh, are taking a very restorative approach, which I really like. And that's to, you know, we don't want to ostracize anyone after an event occurs, whether it was the person who made the mistake or if it was the person that the mistake was done to. So I think that's that's been a big focus of mine. And then um, the surveying as well, that's something that we're we're working on and that'll go out hopefully in in about a week not too far from now so that'll be that'll be exciting and I think that's just going to help us get a good idea of where we are and where we need to go from there. Now, what is what is the survey? Is yeah question? so we're Annie do you want to? Take it right ahead, Sarah. Okay, so we're, we're sending out a survey to students and to their families. We're first going to release them to their students, I think, um, 
Uh, we might be releasing the family ones at the same time. I don't quite remember the exact timeline there, but it's it's going to ask a lot of questions about, you know, how students are feeling in school. Are they feeling included? Do they feel heard by their teachers? Do they have a safe place they can go? And just trying to figure out where where we can support students more. And then the family survey similarly will ask a lot of questions about parent involvement in the in the school with their students and that sort of thing to try to figure out, you know, where where are we seeing students are comfortable and where do we need to maybe work on it a little bit more. And is that survey up and down the grades or just in, in, in Hopkins or? So it's gonna be seven to 12 for the first run around. Um, and then after that, we're hoping to sort of work our way down towards the elementary school as well. Right. Our elementary school students do take a survey that in grades four and five. So the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education administers a survey annually, immediately following MCAS. We don't administer it, the state administers it, and then the state provides the, the data, aggregate data, back to each of the districts and schools. They administer that survey in grades four, five, eight, and 10. So it's not all grades, it's just those four grades. We see uh, in that survey, we've gotten almost 100% participation, as you can imagine, in grades four and five, a bit better in eight, and the 10th graders are like, I'm all set. I just took the MCAS, I'm not taking the survey. So we don't get uh, as, as the, and also it's not all grades. Um, but as Sarah said, we would then bring the survey down to, the elementary grades, the families, it'll be all families. So what's the parent experience with schools and the student survey Hopkins this year, and then we'll bring it down to the elementary school. I believe the survey, Sarah, you're gonna have to tell me, they say reliability down to grade five, although it could be used with younger grades, but the research, it would no longer, you know, be deemed reliable statistically, but you could still get information from. Yep. So it's it's grade five is where the is where Panorama, which is the um, the service that we're using for the survey, that's where they say they've tested the data for it. On they say you can apply it to younger grades, but for for the most part, their information is only reliable from grade five. Yeah. And some additional thank you for all of that, Sarah. Mm -hmm. uh, additional information that as I. As I said, I've been a super, the superintendent in the district since 2014. So I'm finishing my ninth year, I'm extremely grateful. I really enjoy working in this community. I really, really like it here. I like the schools, the families, our students, my colleagues. It's a great place to work. Mm -hmm. And in those nine years, we have um, not to imply that Changes and improvements weren't going on before I got here, but in the nine years since I've been here, I can tell you all many things that have changed as a direct result of the hard work of our faculty, our students, and our families. Um, I'm fortunate to work amongst people who do this work and to, to be to have the privilege of supporting their efforts, but in no way do I want to imply that these accomplishments are a reflection of me. That definitely it's the student staff and families. So when I think about curriculum, we have been, ever since I've been here, teachers always put together what are called curriculum maps. Think about like, what am I teaching? How am I teaching it? When are certain, when is certain content taught? How do we assess it? You map kind of your instructional plan for the year and the curriculum. They're constantly revising those. So in the last two years, they have been revising them to make sure that they explicitly identify the social justice standards mm -hmm. in each of the courses. So there are social justice standards that we use. I believe they come from teaching tolerance. You know, Sarah, you might know what happens, but I believe they come from teaching tolerance. I should check that. Um, so explicitly uh, integrating social justice standards, also culturally responsive pedagogical practices. As you noted, Teachers work very hard to make sure that the materials that they are using are representative of, at a minimum, all of the students 
in our schools. Our schools are more just diverse than this community. This community in the 2020 census, I believe it is about 85% white, whereas the schools are about 75% white. So we're fortunate, and at a future meeting, if you're interested, I can we can bring our equity dashboard. I should have had it in front of me that really analyzes some of the, our demographic data and demonstrates how school choice has been extremely effective in increasing diversity. You can just tell by the fact that the schools are more diverse than the town in which they are. Massachusetts is a highly, highly, like most states in the Northeast, but it's um, it's segregated, schools are segregated and communities are segregated, but our schools are more integrated than our communities usually. Um, so our teachers go above and beyond to make sure that materials, and this isn't just at Hopkins mm -hmm. Academy, mm -hmm. the teachers uh, frequently will do kind of these walk the walls to make sure that um, everybody sees themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So what, I once heard a speaker say this and they, they said it so well. If you go to an event, a family event, and somebody sends you the Shutterfly pictures afterwards, mm -hmm. what's the first thing all of us do? You may not want to admit it. You may be more humble than I am. I look for oh, myself. Good. There's one, I look for myself. Good. And then the next question, I better look good, right? How do I look? And we say that instructional materials and what's on the walls, that students do the same thing. Do I see myself? And I hope I look good, just like we do when we look at photo albums. So we make sure our teachers are cognizant of that, not just in what children are reading, but in what they see on the walls. Um, and that's been a, a focus of ours these past uh, few years. We've also provided teachers with professional development. And just this year, we contracted, and this will continue in the next year, with um, Dr. Khalees Warnham from KW Diversity. And she did a professional development workshop this past March on what it means to be a culturally proficient educator. At the start of the school year, she will do a more in-depth uh, presentation on that content specifically for Hadley Elementary. Sometimes, so I don't wanna say it's easier at the upper grades, but as you pointed out, books, the maturity of students to wrap their heads around topics. Sometimes it's, it's mm -hmm. teachers wonder, how do I talk about these things with somebody who's in first grade, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, so she'll do a specialized workshop for our elementary educators, then she will do a follow-up workshop in uh, September on implicit bias and microaggressions. And then in March of next year, a workshop on having difficult conversations. Um, we are also working with Suffolk, uh, Suffolk University College, Suffolk. Mm -hmm. um, Sarah talked about restorative practices. So our entire faculty at Hopkins Academy, our first cohort, Sarah was part of this training. Our first cohort received training in restorative uh, justice and restorative practices this past spring. And then the remaining faculty will receive that training next year. Um, curriculum, talked about that. Mm -hmm. Professional development. Um, we talked about the surveys. The surveys are part of kind of a broader a broader assessment and of what it means to have a safe and supportive learning environment. So um, the surveys, we know that schools frequently, when we think about school safety, we think about like hardening our schools and preventing intruders and things of this nature, but really that sometimes the most destabilizing element in any social organism and particularly in a school is an individual who feels disconnected. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So we do mm -hmm. things at Hopkins, for example, the principal, April Camuso, she's finishing up her PhD right now at UMass. She has a lot of skills in doing something called social network analysis that allows us to map the relationships that every adult has in the building, that every child has in the building. And what's critical is that we don't have any students who feel as though they have no one to whom they can turn. Mm -hmm. um, so we do social network analysis to map relationships. Um, we, uh, not only are we doing the panorama surveys, we have in the past done focus groups with students. And also we've done surveys of students that we've created ourselves to try to get a sense of how they feel at school, um, where they feel, like their social cohesion and where they feel like 
there are gaps where people are not seen, not heard, or perhaps not respected. Um, I co-advise with the school librarian um, intergroup dialogue group of high school students where we're learning about intergroup dialogue and nonviolent communication with the goal of trying to, I mean, ultimately our goal is to have community conversations where people can engage in dialogue across difference. Mm -hmm. um, we're also keenly aware of the fact that it's important that we support diversity, but um, that diversity isn't achieved by solely thinking, getting a group of people who look different, but think exactly the same together. That what's really important is that people who are ideologically perhaps opposed to one another are capable of expressing genuine curiosity about another person's viewpoint. And that's what these students are working with me and this other advisor about. And the last bit I'll say about the surveys, when we first did the draft of the survey, we used the survey as Panorama had created it. And we got feedback from some families and it was really good feedback. So a number of the, of the questions were focused, well, as a parent, you probably, or maybe the second one I only sent to Hopkins since the elementary kids aren't taking it. Mm -hmm. But you would have seen the first one. I don't know if you saw the second one. And so the first one you may recall there were about, what's there, like six questions that from questions nine through 15 that were narrowly defined, narrowly focused on race mm -hmm. as feelings around race. Very important. And then one, parents asked some good questions about why wouldn't we be interested in experiences, like students may feel as though they're not connecting or they're being marginalized on the basis of some other identity, yeah. not yeah. strictly race. Yeah. And it was really great that parents brought that up because then I went back to the surveys that we administered before Sarah started working for us. These are surveys that the high school principal created. And the students at Hopkins identified that the most common issues around, um, the most common issues it, when they heard statements that were pejorative, it typically had far more to do with sexual orientation than gender. Mm -hmm. huh. um, and that is not to say that they were indicating that they heard these all the time, yeah. but this was the type of statement. As a matter of fact, if I'm recalling the responses, any, any bias statement, any pejorative statement, we don't want any of that. So there's no amount of it is that this is an acceptable level. However, it was, we were grateful that the students hadn't identified like this is a rampant problem at the school. But what they did say is when I heard this, this is the most like the, the kind mm -hmm. of statement I'm most likely to hear. Mm -hmm. And so that that kind of gelled with parents who asked me the question, not that this isn't important, but if you're only asking this and I feel like I don't belong for this other reason. Mm -hmm. um, and that made a lot of sense. Uh, that made a lot of sense especially because statistically, um, you know, the number of students that are likely to perhaps identify um, as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, um, that's a large, even if they haven't told us, it's, that's typically mm -hmm. a fairly large, larger group of students, mm -hmm. um, perhaps than we have represented in some other demographic groups. And also um, we revised the questions to include things like our identities around income, right? So yeah. we have, right. oh goodness, Sarah, do you remember from the dashboard? I'm sure you this. I wanna say almost 30% free and reduced lunch. So we have a high percentage of free and reduced lunch, maybe higher than that. Mm -hmm. um, so that was important, making those revisions, that was important. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think that, I think that's some of what we're doing. I'm just trying to remember. We do a lot. <laughs> yeah. I have a question about yeah. the sexual identity. Did that come from what what grade level parent was commenting on that? Oh, on the why so, why so narrowly focused solely yeah. on race? Uh, let me think. So I have to inside my head call up their names and then tell you. Actually, I <laughs> it was a range. So I heard right. from okay. some elementary parents. Yeah. Okay. I heard from some high school parents, okay. middle high school. So mm -hmm. I heard from both campuses. Yeah. 
Some folks mm. picked up the phone, called me a couple emails, and then I picked up the phone and called them. And yeah, and anything around religion and for and we and religion is yeah. So we listed mm -hmm. it. We changed it to read. I don't know, Sarah. Do you remember how it reads now? She has it right in front of her. Look at that. <laughs> I'm gonna find it and I'll tell you. <laughs> yes. And that also makes it more in line with the, the survey I said that the Department of Ed gives out. That it's mm -hmm. called the Vocal Survey, Viewpoints on Climate and Learning. That's what Vocal stands for. And so it asks, I think we borrowed Vocal's um, parentheses when they say, do you ever feel like you don't belong or something? Uh, mm -hmm. She'll have one. She'll give us an example of the question. Yeah, so the, the the first question, for example, is how often do teachers encourage you to learn about people from different backgrounds, and then in parentheses, different races, cultures, family income, religion, sex, sexual orientation. Right, whereas before that question might have just said from different races, uh -huh. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, how, um, how would the sort of survey results be communicated to families or the community, like what what opportunities for sharing that information they can be. Yeah, so our for our plan right now is when we get the initial results that we would first, um, there'll be a one team that looks at it over the summer where the administrative mm -hmm. team works during the summer, but then another team of folks who were part of our Safe and Supportive Schools grant this mm -hmm. past year. So they'll look at that preliminary data to try to understand where we want to intensify and focus our efforts next year in our safe and supportive schools work. And then we will include, incorporate that data into the equity dashboard. The equity dashboard at a minimum we have to figure out where we're putting it on the website and where that will live. Right now, so we, the leadership team put together the preliminary draft of an equity dashboard. We've now contracted with UMass Amherst to their school psychology department helps us with a gazillion things. We've contracted with them to help us make it more visually appealing, to identify gaps in our data collection, some data sets that we should be looking at perhaps that aren't there. Mm -hmm. Also to help us determine um, questions of statistical significance. So all we've said at this point is we notice where we see over or under representation, mm -hmm. right? Based on demographic characteristics, but we haven't gone so far as to say that this is statistically significant because in some cases, the cohorts are so small. So you may as well help us with that. At least twice a year, the dashboard will be presented at a school committee meeting because it's part of my evaluation. Um, so two to three times a year, I will be presenting an update on the dashboard. It would be updated because we include in the dashboard data. For example, we do three times a year, we screen students in their literacy skills, their numeracy skills, and also in behavioral health. And students in grades five through 12, next year it'll be grades four through 12, on behavioral health screen themselves and teachers in all grades screen students. Mm -hmm. um, and then we disaggregate the screening data by uh, various demographic groups. Um, so that's why it gets updated. And we also look at discipline referral data mm -hmm. and that we look at quarterly. And so that gets updated. The survey data will be included in the dashboard. Um, and when we and when we give a future surveys, then we will look at changes over time in people's perceptions. Okay. Yeah, and we found you know, the dashboard was really interesting. Um, we did find some things that we would ex that that we were looking not looking for, but um, you know I, when I say that we would expect it's not because we want these things to happen, yeah. but we know that disproportionality we we anticipated I would say mm -hmm. that we might see that. So for example, in disciplinary referrals, mm -hmm. um, but there were some places where. Um, I was surprised. I wasn't expecting to see such disproportionality. So, and, and really the big one was around gender. So in gender, and, and this is a, a statewide mm -hmm. issue. Um, for us, 
Males, females, about 50-50 when it comes to the student body. It's about 50%, 50%. And, but when it comes to special education, 75% male, 25% female. Statewide, it's mm-hmm. about 69-31 male, female. It's, um, that's, and mm-hmm. when it comes to disciplinary referrals, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. way more male than female. Mm-hmm. And that's an interesting thing and important for us to pay attention to. There's a lot of research lately about um, kind of a- academically and behaviorally the bottom falling out for boys across the country mm-hmm. um, and what we're seeing and seeing it all the way through higher ed. Mm-hmm. Um, so like number of degrees granted, completion rates, mm-hmm. um, oh, things yeah. are, you may have yeah. seen some of these articles oh, in The yeah. Economist, in The New York Times, this is, yeah. and yep. so that was one that it was kind of surprising to see this front and center in our district. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also with mental health in terms of like suicidality in terms mm-hmm. of men and those risks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I guess I'm curious, you know, we're all probably very aware of book banning, attacks on trans youth and access to medical care or playing sports, you know, that are in line with their gender. I guess I'm I'm wondering, being at the district for nine years, if you are seeing any significant shifts in um, input in terms of pushback on this work or, um, you know, just thinking about the ways that school committees have become more and more sort of uh, politicized and contentious in a lot of places. And I'm just kind of curious on your perspectives mm-hmm. around that. Uh, we are blessed. Uh, <laughs> we are really blessed. Um, I'm not saying this just because they're my employers. They could change at any time. Mm-hmm. I, I am, employed, you know, my supervisors are the people of the town elects to be on the school committee, uh, but they are intelligent, mm-hmm. rational people. Uh, who do not think alike. They uh, mm-hmm. they have very different opinions and ideas about things. We saw that during COVID. Mm-hmm. And yet we never had some of what you saw in other meetings, yeah. never had mm-hmm. uh, a lack of civility mm-hmm. uh, or contention. Um, you know, and that was a tough time. People had yeah. really, people were pretty emotional at that time. Mm-hmm. And yet, uh, everybody behaved with the utmost respect and civility, even even when it was frustrating and when folks disagreed. When it comes to, so we're we're very fortunate, mm-hmm. very fortunate. Um, that's a big value district wide uh, in both of our schools. I um, and I personally feel really passionately about that that. Um, we can, we can, we can disagree. My job is not to convince people that they have to adopt my perspective, my mm-hmm. ideological orientation. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the important thing is that we listen mm-hmm. to one another, that we seek to understand. So when it comes to things like books, uh, we last year, the librarian, the high school librarian, and I started working on a policy last year around uh, acquisition and weeding in the library. And so our policy is pretty straightforward, and that allows a parent. So we're able, anybody could say, what are the books you have in the library? And we have an electronic catalog. We could hit a button and tell you. A parent can review those books. And if a parent says, I don't want my child reading those books. I have no judgment on that. Parents are get to parent and they get mm-hmm. to parent however they want. And I am not a child's parent. Mm-hmm. And if a parent tells us, yeah, those books, I don't want my kid reading any books like that. Mm-hmm. Then we can indicate something in our student information system that lets us know that the child can't check out books from our library. That's and I don't, I mean, perhaps some people think I should have strong opinions about that. My opinion is that what my job is to, parents are allowed to parent as they choose. Now, when I say that, 
That means there's no need for a parent who may say, I don't want my child reading that, which is perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. But you also don't get to say, and I don't want your child to right. that, right? Right. So I absolutely respect, nor do I judge. I really, it's not an act. Parents, that is their right. That is their right. And it's not my job to convince them to do things otherwise. Mm -hmm. That is their right. And they should exercise that right as they see fit. And if I allow them and respect the fact that they should be able to exercise that right, then they may not feel compelled to exercise that right on behalf of another family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to argue with each other. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to demand, why won't you let your child read this? We can, um, we can though, ask, help me understand what you find disturbing or upsetting about this. And that's what we're trying to do, encourage why we have the dialogue group at the high school, mm -hmm. is um, ask. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ask. Mm -hmm. we, um, and, and our safety is not dependent on being surrounded by people who think exactly as we do. You can be perfectly safe in the presence of somebody whose perspectives differ from yours, even whose perspectives you find abhorrent. You can be okay and they can be okay. We can treat each other with civility. We can learn from one another and we can be courteous. So the book things, we have a pretty good system. Mm -hmm. And um, and people could request that something be removed from the library. There's a process, you know, they have to have read the thing that they're objecting to. They mm -hmm. have to find out that they, do, that they have read it. They have to provide grounds for the objection. And then it's submitted ultimately to review by the principal and the librarian. And I think the final authority rests with one of those parties or both of them together. Mm -hmm. So it's not some sort of, it's not subject to popular vote. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of um, restrooms or, mm -hmm. uh, this has not been mm -hmm. an issue. And, and that is not to say that children don't say and do regrettable things. They're children. They do. That's, that's, <laughs> they're they do. Adults. Yeah. <laughs> they're, exactly. Good point. <laughs> so they do, and they will. Uh, and that's why we're here to, um, as I say to young people all the time, my job is to help you to make your who and your do match. As I always say to kids, I know exactly who you are. You're wise and you're wonderful and you're good. So we need to make sure that what you do shows the world who you are. Mm -hmm. We're going to line up your who and your do. And so, but kids and adults say and do things that aren't reflective of who they truly are. And we, that's where we have restorative practices. My experience though, we, we've had students on all kinds of journeys and their peers have been accepting. Our community has been accepting. We had zero pushback when we had gender neutral bathrooms. We've had them for years mm -hmm. in both schools. I mean, our schools aren't terribly new. So it isn't like, you know, fancy. We've had to repurpose spaces yeah, right. because these are older buildings, but never, never any pushback um, from the students, uh, from the staff. Um, never had any issues on field trips. Um, no. It's not to say it couldn't happen, mm -hmm. but it just hasn't been something. Yet. You mentioned that, uh, let's say, a parent wanted to put in a protest. I do not want my child reading, reading their books, and you said that they won't be able to check that out of the library. What if a parent protests against the curriculum? book and they opt their kid out of so mm -hmm. out of the core curriculum they um we try to be as accommodating as possible this is rare that things like this occur mm -hmm. um but so out of the core curriculum a parent could we don't use a lot of textbooks at that at the middle and high school that's more common at the elementary school teachers are teaching a lot more subjects at the high school, even in history, we tend to use primary sources or teach from novels. Mm -hmm. So part of the core curriculum, I've had the experience of meeting with um, a teacher, an English teacher, department chair, 
a family and myself, we all met because the family did not want their children reading a particular book. The content, um, they objected to it on their personal religious grounds and they object, objected to the content. And we, so my feeling there is we are responsible for teaching um, skills and 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 certain content, but a lot of a lot of English has to do with teaching skills, right? Critical literacy and reading and writing. And so we provided an alternative for the child to learn those skills, same level, just an alternative piece of literature mm -hmm. um, in that case. The, mm -hmm. I, I didn't see where, and there, and there was some pretty um, intense, never you know disrespectful, but intense discussion among us professionals about that. Mm -hmm. um, but I couldn't, I didn't see how demanding that somebody violate a sincerely held belief, even though it's not my sincerely held belief, it's their sincerely held belief. I didn't see the, the upside of that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't see the upside of that. What was most important, we partner with families, we collaborate with families. Um, yeah, and I just didn't, see and I didn't see the win for a child for a young person they they love their parents more than anything even though they work hard to convince their parents of otherwise to have to <laughs> high school they love their parents more than anything mm -hmm. and frequently they also love their teachers mm -hmm. and so we do children no favors when we don't figure out how to have positive relationships with their parents mm -hmm. it's a horrible place for a child to be. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's also part of what, you know, di ex ex diversity and inclusion, I mean, sometimes an outlier, I'm an outlier on this. For me, it is not about demanding that every single person accept a predetermined set of principles mm -hmm. as we define something. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what I, what I owe children is um, that I love who they love. Right, that makes kids feel good, mm -hmm. and so um, I don't have to agree. I don't have to approve, nor do the people they love have to agree or approve with me. But I do owe it to kids to love who they love mm -hmm. and not judge. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Anything that you wanted to add, Sarah? Or Not really. I think Dr. McKenzie did a fantastic job at explaining yeah. sort of everything we're we're working on, and I think I'm, I'm very excited to see you know where where we can go from here in the future. Sarah is doing an amazing job mm -hmm. too. Really, the students adore her. <laughs> they spend more time at the middle and high school. If that makes sense, because yeah. middle they're trying to be um, they are young adults mm -hmm. and uh, it's a clunky exercise growing up and trying on adults head. it's mm -hmm. clunky for adults it's even clunkier mm -hmm. for children yeah. so she is does a great job of they have really warmed to her and as they they've really warmed to her mm -hmm. yeah are there any ways that you could see our committee supporting supporting the district supporting these efforts or well, sort of um, whether that's attending particular meetings mm -hmm. or um, sometimes I know it's impactful for educators and also for administrators to hear from families around mm -hmm. certain issues or, or lending that kind of support. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about that. I will say that's a goal of mine and of, of ours and where it would be helpful to me. I just had this conversation with the school committee member today I, I'd like to think of myself as approachable and then it's easy for me to forget that I'm the superintendent. So for some people, <laughs> like I remember one parent said that to me, a parent called me and said, yeah, I was telling my friend, it was a school choice parent, said, yeah, I was telling my friend, I was talking to the superintendent. My friend was like, 
call the superintendent. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. And that's the next yeah. thing about a small district. People yeah. can just call me if they want to. But yeah. it's, yeah. I forget that I'm the superintendent. They don't. Um, and so anything to allow us to connect with families, we're open to any ideas. And for mm -hmm. Sarah, because Sarah doesn't, I also, I don't live in town. I live in South Hadley. Sarah mm -hmm. lives in, in West Side and West Springfield. And um, we are probably next year, I mean, Sarah's now getting to know kids and wrapping up this year, but um, we really want to figure out how, because part of her role is that, to connect with families mm -hmm. and engage with families. So we would be open to anything that I think doesn't even have to be formal, just mm -hmm. that people can be with us and meet us and especially know, and particularly if they feel that there's something going on yeah. that feels unfair or not quite right. And it does not have to be strictly about race or ethnicity or sure. it can be a white middle-class farming family. I sure. feel like something just doesn't feel right. Yeah. And Sarah's here to say, well, tell me about that. Let's try to make it right. So anything that will get us connected to people mm -hmm. would be lovely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So over here. Yeah. Very intentional. It's uh, mm -hmm. not where I grew up. But. <laughs> <laughs> now we have um, Hopkins Diversity Club on the agenda. And I think any partnership with the club mm -hmm. um, or even any connection with the students in the club mm -hmm. is something that, that we have had in the past and would value. Would that be yes. right? Yes. yes. Yeah. And also have the elementary has a diversity class. Mm -hmm. no, really. Also, mm -hmm. so they've moved down now. Both mm -hmm. campuses have that. Mm -hmm. And it looks a little different and it sounds a little different. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I just, mm -hmm. yeah, I love how kids go to different places developmentally. Yeah. When they get to middle school, they're incredibly concerned with justice mm -hmm. and right mm -hmm. and wrong. Mm -hmm. and we'll soon find this out. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> okay. Everything. They're very yeah. clear about when a rule is broken, they advocate mm. for everything. The younger kids have a different orientation. So the older mm -hmm. students, as you know, are kind of thinking about these world international issues. And, mm. and the younger students, when they're thinking about issues of diversity in their diversity club, sounds very different and it's all mm -hmm. wonderful. But we do have clubs in both campuses now. Mm -hmm. Miss Lanham and Miss Mills are the advisors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Amy used to attend when she could. I remember she had a newborn at some point. Yeah, yeah. so she's on she's on leave right now with her family, uh, and I believe she'll be back maybe in the fall. Um, I always encourage people to do whatever's right for them, but I think back in the fall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think in the past we co-sponsored a program, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then any co-sponsorship. You know, between the clubs and the mm -hmm. committee, I think we would be very open to, or mm -hmm. um, you know, whatever would be supportive. Yeah, you know, I think we want to feel part of the community at large, mm -hmm. and not just a standalone group that yeah. you know is in isolation. Mm -hmm. Community dialogues or events yeah. or any kind yeah. of partnerships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also, uh, you know, just in, in hearing from my networks as a clinical social worker, but also I taught at UMass for the mm -hmm. first time this spring in sociology, also thinking about whether or not we're going to see more families moving to Massachusetts from other parts of the country that have trans kiddos. Mm -hmm. And I'm already hearing about whether people mm -hmm. are leaving New Hampshire or mm -hmm. in other places that it just might be something to just sort of be thinking about and considering in terms of um, welcoming and supporting mm -hmm. families. Yeah, I just read a story about a family from somewhere down south, I don't know if it's mm -hmm. Texas or somewhere that moved to Oregon. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Tough decision. I mean, actually there were two families. So I, think, I think the one from Texas, they actually both owned businesses. So it was a really yeah. tough decision, yeah. but they had to choose their, their kids. Yeah. Their kids, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure you have other things on yes. your evening agenda. Yeah. So 
Keep pressing to note the undervalued. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for having us. Yeah, thank, thank you, Sarah. So thank you so much. much. Yeah, so for the on. Yes, yeah. thank, thank you, you so much. much. I'll see you tomorrow, my friend. Yes. Oh, you yeah. have to get up the crack of dawn tomorrow because it's a professional development day, right? Very so true. Yes. Yep. So a little bit later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. It was yeah. nice meeting you. Yes. Yeah. So, so you gave us a lot to think about. We we may yeah. uh, we may reach out again because we'll mm -hmm. we'll sure. be machinating on on, on that. And yeah. 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 Happy to come back and even talk about our dashboard and if you guys want to take a look at it and what you see there. Yeah. Yeah. You can help us make sense of it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no questions come up. Thank right. you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Have a great evening. Yep. Thank, thank you. Go so right out. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, that was wonderful. That was 5D. Mm -hmm. um, any reason we shouldn't just jump back to four whole business? Sure. Um, like I'm going to actually send you the real agenda that was updated because I know. Oh, okay. You, or I'm going to send. I'm going to text it to you. Okay. Oh, okay. It's, yeah, because you kept saying it's five A, and I'm, I'm looking um, at five A, and I'm like, yeah, okay, because you have to put it. Yeah. Which one? Got it. Got it. Yeah. Which one? Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Which one? I was like. So, so I'm reading, That's why I'm reading, were, oh reading that, God. and I'm yeah, feeling yeah. disconnected from the group. Yes, that I <laughs> you said. Was, That's what I had in the file, but there's there was an update that I sent you know, email. So. I sent them. I was going to print them, and I didn't get to printing them. And yeah, you're right. This doesn't even. Yeah, it doesn't even matter. Maybe it's a different tech or not. Okay, I'll do it later, and then the remembering thing. Now I understand that. Yeah, I was like looking down. I'm like, where are we? Why do we? Yeah, sorry, I realized it when you were staring at it. I'm sorry about that. I just <laughs> sent it to you. I sent you one. I was like, does somebody else it? Yeah, okay. Oh. It's okay. What was it? We're we're adults and we can be clunky too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Have you got it, Mark? Um, did Almost. you send it to my Yeah, I just sent it to your phone. You sent it to my Gmail? No, your phone. I texted it to oh, you. Oh, you texted it. Oh, oh. oh <laughs> Big, there you go. Next. And so we will. Oh, new business yeah. was A. I yes. just Got and it. found it. Got uh, it. So that was conversation. You have there. Okay, one great. With I did. I yeah, my yeah, seems yeah. yeah. to be okay. 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 Great. Did you get it, Meg? Yes, I did. Okay. Thank you. So, Mark, where is it you want to go? So, we're back going back to 4A, which okay. is selection yeah. of film and senior center movie matinee. Right. Well, no, do you want to go to old? That's yeah, right. Old business. That's, a, a. That, that's where he is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Old business. So remind me, did we not? Huh? Did we not select? I think we didn't select people throughout idea. Oh, okay. And, and, and we missed a month. Failed so. to be oh, right. April because everybody was so busy. Okay. Yeah. And okay. I got right. a oh, here it is. And that's right. Going on canopy and searching on. Films that had to do with transgender issues, mm -hmm. and I think I sent the link of the results of yeah. that search to Megan, but mm -hmm. I never got a chance to watch anything. I, I, oh, I really I want to know that. By that fast. <laughs> yes, so they all this sound week good. I'm starting to. <laughs> really? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you could almost just kind of go boink at random, and it would probably <laughs> worth doing. Yeah. Yes. Any of them current? They did range across a, a, a broad span of time. I don't think Canopy has brand new stuff. Mm -hmm. So people with mm -hmm. other subscription services might look and see what's available on those. I just have Canopy. And then if we, like, I know that there's a series on HBO about trans youth if I have an HBO subscription, am I just like I, asking that at the senior center? Or I, like, how does that even work? Or do you have to have a DVD? No, I think it works. Like, I watched a movie at the library a while back 
that was on somebody's person. Somebody used their personal account to bring it up on the screen at the library, and I think okay. the same thing can work. Okay. Yeah, it very it. good about, about but that's figuring it out. Like okay. So with there, with one thing I could that. offer to do is if you send me the list, I can work with Violet. Mm. And she can see which films yeah. are available, right. and, and mm -hmm. maybe she thinks, pick what she thinks because uh, yeah. this is yeah. like a yeah. movie matinee. Yeah. yeah, so it we have tended to do a, an informative but lighter film. Yes, mm -hmm. that, right. like a film that yeah. you you know yeah. have popcorn with. Yeah, but right. Yeah. Learn. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That okay. So sense. Violet yeah. is good. She picked the last yeah. one, which was great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that was good. So if you send me the list, then I can I, I can vet I vote for that. Is that all right? Let them oh, yeah. bring some choices okay. and let her okay. yeah. let her decide. That's very wise. Yeah, yeah. Since it's also for their that's venue. Yes. Yeah. And I will come to that event. That will be my first. Okay, so it's Monday. June sixteenth yep. at twelve thirty. Perfect. That is a that a Friday. Friday. Yes. So that's the Friday before Juneteenth, which is, I think, mm -hmm. the next Monday. Mm -hmm. Yep, it is. Okay. Thank you, Pat. My pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, there is something you can do with like an iPhone and a smart TV. It's it's not AirDrop, it's Air something. Mm -hmm. you can yeah. Screen. I've had a younger child do it with my phone, take it. Yeah. Say, oh, you yeah. just do this and that. Give it to my kids. They'll yeah. figure it out in 30 seconds. <laughs> it's amazing. amazing. Yeah. I know. The yeah. skill set there. It's amazing. <laughs> They're so literate. <laughs> we, we have a committee meeting the day before that. But I show here. On the 15th? Oh, that would make sense. The first, first the 8th and then the 15th. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then that's also okay. the date for the... the uh, so so that's we'll, further down here, the World's Fair, Juneteenth. Um, so, right. not letter D, but we'll get to that. Okay. All right. So, for A, we're um, sending any any ideas to Pat, who mm -hmm. will send them on to Violet, mm -hmm. and we'll let you. And I think I'll do that Monday. So if people okay. could send them to me, you know, over the weekend. Mm -hmm. That would be done. And there's two here already, correct? That's right. Okay. Okay. Uh, for B would be the ZBA affordable housing local reference update. Do you know about that, Mark? Is there an update? I don't know that there's an I know that they have appealed. Mm -hmm. I know what I read in the paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know where it stands. I think there's a some kind of a housing committee, not a court, but it's like a Something within, and I'm not positive, but I believe it's within uh, the vision of housing and community mm -hmm. development that they have some, uh, and so that's where it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that's where it is. Um, also, at the same time, the planning board just had uh, at our last meeting, which was Tuesday night, so it was town election, so we were not allowed to have any public hearings. So what we did was an information session. We had a Inner Valley Planning Commission a person who specializes in um, 40R housing came and gave a, a bit of a presentation and answered questions about a 40R district overlaying and how that mm -hmm. could work for Hadley. Um, <clears throat> and I think that was requested was I think a number of people were uh, taken aback at how the uh, you know just how the application for the Econo Lodge was uh, rejected basically out of hand, like not even considered on its merits. They just felt you know, the, that the ZBA um, apparently felt that that was not something they were comfortably comfortable accepting as three voting members mm -hmm. versus 
the history of the town, just, you know, not having enacted anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there were a lot of people who said, great, bring it to a, a, a popular vote, you know, but uh, there was no way to do that by town meeting. Yeah. And so I think there, I think I heard, I, I was not able to go to it, but there was, I think there was a grassroots meeting um, that uh, might have been Michael Doctor and his wife uh, mm -hmm. hosted. Uh, maybe it was a brown bag or whatever, and people gathered for dinner and talked about, you know, kind of what what can we do? And I don't know if it came out of that or whatever, but there was a, uh, one of the possibilities was this 40R mm -hmm. district, which um, what I was learning at Tuesday night's meeting is it's basically the state letting you do what otherwise is not allowed, which is called spot zoning. If you can do this overlay and say, we would allow, you know, this kind of dense housing configuration in these spots. Um, Northampton was cited as having um, I think two different 40 yard districts and one was like a half an acre and one was, I don't know, don't quote me, maybe four or 14 acres or something. Um, and I don't remember if they'd both been built on or not, but, mm -hmm. but those were accepted by the state. Um, you know, so that would lend itself if we wanted to create, for example, if there was a groundswell to create a 40R district encompassing the kind of large property, then that would make it an allowed use there. Um, I think one of the downsides is that we might, uh, it, I, I think that we would lose some of the leverage that we had if we had approved, if we had decided to approve it through the ZBA, we would say, we'd like to see this, we'd like to see that, we'd like to see, you know, but I'm not sure. I think the Valley DTC was offering those things anyway. I, I don't know if they would offer them if it wasn't allowed. Anyway, mm -hmm. so that's a quick takeaway on where I'm aware. But the 40 hour would take a while. It has a process and it would have to go through the town, go through the state, back to the town. So it's probably a year. What we were hearing was a year to a year and a half out. So I don't think that would be a remedy, a quick remedy for the mm -hmm. um, for that particular case on Route Nine. Mm -hmm. And that would be my update. On okay. That. Um, not really the you know. Um, I think we did hear that you can you can put a you can request a you know, you can dictate a local preference in your 40 yard district. And I think that we heard, maybe not confirmed, but that the specialist said that she believed we could specify this district is for um, 55 plus, or, you know, this is for families or this, you know. So I think there are some options that you can um, aim. So, um, where did it go? It closed on me. So that being for B, or C was had the housing production plan discussion. We not already kind of cover that. Well, I've read the plan now, and um, of course, on the heels of all this other stuff, uh, I often had to sort of close it and look out the window because at least three times Valley CDC was mentioned as a valuable resource and somebody we should consult with, and they'll be a great person to talk to about this, and now they can help with that, and somebody else didn't read it. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was wonderful to read. I mean, the people who put that report together really did a lot of homework. 
a lot of people did a lot of homework. It's a very readable document. I strongly encourage everyone to read it. It's not that long. It's you can get it as a PDF if that's easier for you. You can go to the town hall and get it printed out for you if you don't have a, co a cooperative printer at home. Um, <laughs> so I really, really recommend people read it. It's very readable. It's very well, well put together. It's organized. Very inspiring. Yeah. There's yeah. data. Yeah. yeah, it's very comprehensive. Yeah, yeah, it recognizes the value of our farmland and of our wetlands, which are both things dear to me. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. it's really, really well done. Yeah, yeah I just, yeah, wow. <laughs> really worth reading. Yeah, well, hopefully that will be a tool that we can use going, going forward. Yeah, yeah, I really want everybody to be familiar with that. Yeah. Uh, we're doing our times. Yeah, yeah, so if we were to move on to 5B, which was collaboration with Hopkins Diversity Club, I think we touched on that mm -hmm. already. Uh, 5C, idea for celebrating Juneteenth. Um, the Hadley World's Fair is the next item, and mm -hmm. I, thought, I spoke with the um, Humera, and they that at the Hadley World's Fair, they wish to acknowledge Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. Right. So she said she would um, appreciate it if we wanted to offer something. And I suggested that we provide some handouts as we did last year at the Juneteenth program. And she said mm -hmm. that would be great. Great. Um, but I don't know if people want to consider doing something standalone, separate. Um, it's coming kind of close. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's not, yeah. That sounds nice. Is yeah. that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I really want to do something with my kids around Juneteenth and finding a good educational video or doing some sort of education, and they wonder about speaking to teachers about whether or not they are talking about Juneteenth in the classrooms. Oh, no. They is, may already. This is what we handed out last year. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. right, right, right. And so this is a resource we can hand out again. Right. Oh, oh, so, oh, oh yeah. Bill Gray too. Yep. Perfect. Oh okay. Yeah, I remember yeah. you yeah. remember this. I didn't yeah. get to go last year. Together. I think oh. the last handout's a little lengthy um, and maybe too dense, but I, I particularly like the 10 things you want people to do. To mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that's excellent. Yeah, yeah, sure. And then there are some mm -hmm. some films and things. So I think the first mm -hmm. two handouts maybe duplicate those. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. And so is that okay? This will be our contribution Great. to the Hadley Show mm -hmm. here and Juneteenth. That's very right. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Remind me that I know I brought it up last time, but I I didn't bring my notes from last. It, it is that event starts at six. You know because it it um, happens. The world yeah. crosses with our with our next. Oh, it oh, it does. But I mean, it, it starts at six and this starts at seven. Right. I could go for an hour. That that guy okay, yeah. is just sharing. I don't remember off the top of my head. Well, we can look it up. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll get our devices. Yeah. Is it in like? I actually, I, I think it, I I mentioned it at, at the end of minutes, just or it just says it's doesn't mm. say the time. That would be like a Hadley Learns email. Do you think, Sarah? Sarah, mm. let's go. June. What what day in June was it going to be? Fifteen. Okay, in my date book, I put it down for 5 p.m. to 7 Oh, is yeah. it better? It could be. I just don't and remember. That yeah, was, I, that I can't my... necessarily confirm whether that's wishful thinking or actual factual. <laughs> it might be on the town. <laughs> it might be starting at the 5. Okay, so. I mean, 5 o'clock feels reasonable for weeknight yeah. dinner. I think that it was... Oh, here we go. 
third annual Hadley World's Fair. Here's the digital flyer. Okay. Oh, okay. Awesome. Five to seven thirty. Yeah, oh, that's great. Okay. That's okay. great because you you know that obviously you can drop in. Okay, at the senior center. So that's handy. They probably oh, it's right not at there. the library. Oh, okay. wait a minute. The, well, this email. So we might get bumped. Yeah, because we haven't reserved yet. Right. Well, the that would be in the dining room. And we probably. Be, probably. So yeah. You might just say, well, we're going to yeah. our meeting now. And yeah. if anybody would like to yeah. join us. And this email has, you can RSVP. What is it that you're bringing from your yeah. culture? All right. Um, can you forward that to us all? So right. Let's see. Yeah. Can I do this? I think if you pull up maybe Mark's name, maybe all of our names would come up. <laughs> but they want to verify this is me. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. No, no, no. I'm not trying to do that. I guess it took me to a website. So this is the... Oh, okay. All right. So let's forward. Let's see if I have all, I must have all you in here because I didn't answer Mark. Mark done. Mark done. You can keep talking. I don't want to take okay. the whole. Well, the next item is uh, other uh, <clears throat> other ideas for honoring Pride Week. Mm -hmm. I think our June's getting pretty yes. packed. Well, and the and wasn't the Northampton event already happened. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The Greenfield one is June tenth. Yeah. We're dancing in that. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. yeah. Scratch team. Yeah. It, yeah. We've done it a couple of times where anybody on any team comes and you just wear your whites and any kind of rainbow bling you want. And a couple of people that were on Guiding Star. The Northwest side teach us a couple of really simple Northwest processional figures. Mm -hmm. And so we just line up in our whatever our places in the parade and we walk part of the time and then we do the processional figures a couple of part of the time. And it was the most fun ever. Mm -hmm. The first time I did it. Do you know what time the parade is? I think we get up there in late morning. Okay. Um, Saturday. Yeah, it's yeah. Saturday the tenth, but I don't have a lot of information about the date. Okay. I can There's a up. Facebook page. For sure. It. Okay. That is how I found out yeah. about it. Okay. Let me see if I can. And I think it's called Franklin County Pride. Oh. It's under Franklin County Pride. Oh, yeah. You find it? Can we find it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, when we're ready, the next item is town meeting. The discussion of the annual town meeting and its inclusivity. From Pride is 12.30 to 3.30. Yeah. That's Greenfield. Yeah. And if you want to be in on the dancing, get there at like 10 or 10 30 or 11, so like whatever description. Is it in downtown Greenfield? It starts at Energy Park. one of the school oh, buildings. Park is one down by the end. Yeah. And we, where we gather up at one of the school buildings, I forget if it's the middle school or the high school. And um, that's right on that main drag. So you process all the way down that main drag. And then into the energy park, and that's where I go home because it's wall to wall people. I'm like, I'm done now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I guess it's, there's a lot of cool stuff going on at the energy park too. Which mm -hmm. if I wasn't like, yeah, wall to wall people, then I would say that. Hmm. This is a bit intense. Okay. I will make a note to send more information. That next item about town meeting was just a, a little pet peeve I have. 
that it's not the first year, and I, I don't think there's ever been a year, when I find the information easy to find. Mm-hmm. You know, I can find, you know, it'll be on the calendar and it will say the day, but I'm like, like I was in my car and I'm I'm pulling over and I'm searching, I'm like, where? Is it yeah. senior center? Is it the school? Is it the, you know, and it was just, I would, I, 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 I would not say that it's a conspiracy to not get more people to come. I just think that a lot of the people that are invested in its organization maybe just forget. It's just second nature. They know where it's going to be. It would just, so I, I don't know how, maybe I'll find some venue to bring that up. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, maybe next time I'm in town hall, or may- maybe a, a a gentle email to yeah. to Carolyn or something. But that uh, just like it to be all the you know the date, the time, the location, yeah, um, mm-hmm. like all more, in yeah. multiple locations. Right. Yeah. You yeah. know, not well, the, not you know, yeah. like on the calendar, it didn't yeah. have all three of those, yeah. uh, or at least it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. wasn't uh, intuitive for an old clunky adult like me to find. Um, so uh, you it, were there. I did make it there, <laughs> but <laughs> not after you know, yeah. not until after uh, a lot of. And and I I've spoken to others who also just were like, where is it? Where? Yeah. It, uh, but has it been somewhere else? I've never known it to be anywhere else. Yeah. We had it at the firehouse. Except, right, it was COVID. Yeah. It had to be outdoors. I saw that as a yeah. total exception. Right. Because every time it's always years, been at the high school. It's always yeah. been. It's either in the cafeteria or if they expect a really controversial topic, mm-hmm. then they have it in the gymnasium. Mm-hmm. Where it's more, yeah. Usually it's in the cafeteria. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a good point, though, in terms yeah. of making that information really right, right. accessible, really easy to find. And you're like in town, you know, you yeah, don't you know, know where it's at. Right. And okay. Deerfield, sometimes the chief of police would do a, a robocall uh-huh. for town residents. I'm and so then people are getting a voicemail. Well, that's town you. meeting, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if you're all on the Nixle. I am on that. Does that would be know, nice to have it on. I don't think it's on there. It's on it? the So I get. Um, I'll, I'll send it to you. I, okay, that's um, a town. I get an email. Yeah, I, I get an email. Yeah. That tells me what's going to happen. Like what roads going to be going to be paid. Um, that's right. Yeah. 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 But I don't. I don't think they said town meeting was coming out. No, I don't yeah, think they did. did. Just, oh, you make a good point. I've often wondered. I'm going to send this website, Mark. That the agenda was submitted on April 27th at 9.25 a.m. And the meeting was on May the 4th. So it that is, isn't too many days in advance. Yeah. Say that, that's the required. It, if you just right. go on the on the website, you see the, it says it's at Hopkins Academy. Oh, okay. And then the agenda is there and you upload the agenda. But on the agenda, it doesn't have the location. Oh. On the warrant, yeah. it doesn't have the location. Yeah. So it's two different places. At least right. I'm reading this as, yeah. you know, correctly. So right. I think just having everything in one place and maybe advance yeah. notice. Yeah, I, I find that with elections, too. It's hard oh, to yeah. find the statements of the candidates. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and they usually have, historically, the Hadley Mothers Club will have a, a gathering and during COVID, it was on Zoom, but mm-hmm. where you'll hear the candidates, and I never hear like when that is. You don't right. see anything. I read the the local paper. Mm-hmm. You never see any of this mm-hmm. stuff in the paper, mm-hmm. and you might see, you know, one of those signs. Like right now, you you always see that their Memorial Day parade is coming up. That's right. right. And, yeah. and if, right. if you're you know if you're driving around, yeah. Um, and used to be, well, you'll see a vote sign if it's, you know, November election, you know. Yeah, I think, I think, not, I think they but, do have a DPW uh, the night before. Out, yeah. What sign yeah, yeah, but still. The so whole, I just whole sent topic you, out of I forwarded you the email that I get from Nixle, and that should okay. hopefully in there give you a, an option to sign up. I don't know. It wouldn't make sense if mm-hmm. I'm already signed up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if that's something that it's just, 
that we could try to help with or support accessibility. I mean, even just, yeah. <laughs> I was so glad you sent me the Zoom link because I was on the town page and I was looking everywhere and I'm, yeah, right. right. It shouldn't like, be hard. It shouldn't be it shouldn't that hard. Be right. Yeah. Not to criticize yeah. anybody yeah. in particular, but yeah. just for me to be navigating in all different places and still not be able to but find it. a good point. I've always had a concern about the concept of inclusivity yeah. of new yeah. people mm -hmm. yeah. up here. Yeah. Because yeah. town meeting, I go and I even see these people sitting in the same position. You know, these are the yeah. regulars. And they know that town meeting is always on the whatever of May. Every mm -hmm. it, yeah. they probably have it in their schedule, you know. Right. Right. You know, right. and I kind of gotten to that point where I'll I'll hear, you know, in the middle of the winter, that'll be on the next town meeting, and I'll write it down. But well, they uh, actually me. they actually did make a change. Was it just this year or yeah. last year? Just last year? I, they, yes. That, that it made sense to put the elections right after after the right. town meeting, so that. The people that present and prepare the the budgets and all that are there to you know are yes. still and then yeah. then the elections come after that. That's right. Yeah. We did vote for that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 That made sense. But it's just weird to think that town with what is it, four thousand registered voters or whatever. Or, well, well, you don't even have to be registered a resident. And the amount of people that show up is is just oh really it's yeah very small tiny. yeah well yeah, I mean, uh, just, I, mean well, it's, the, I think this time we got to a quorum very quickly they said something about getting to a quorum faster than usual which is hundred yeah. people hundred people hundred people hundred okay. people town population five thousand five thousand five hundred yeah, yeah just think know. about the the small amount of people making decisions Big decisions for the town. Yeah. yeah yeah let's put the the housing thing on I think the <laughs> the thirty eight I think I just read in the paper 3,800 registered voters yes. in, in town. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, and, and and this was a small turnout, which was acknowledged because there weren't really, there, there were only two contested races, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember when I went on the planning board, that was, there were more contested, you know, that oh, was yeah. a, that was a right. hot one. That was. And, as I recall, I got, I think I had 900 and my opponent had 300. So that's 1,200. That's a 30% turnout. Yeah. yeah so pretty good. we can get good mm -hmm. turnouts when it's, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just feel even if it's not contested, you still want to say, yeah, yes, you can be yeah. done 40 years in the planning board. You could do another five. <laughs> that's, that's someone who, you know, you know just to, yeah. Uh, but you have to make the effort, you know, get in your car and go do it. Yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. Uh, Joanne, yeah. we're running out of time. Yeah. Do you want to jump to development of resource list? I website? don't remember what this is at all. <laughs> I was looking in the minutes. Did I say, mm -hmm. what did I say? Okay, I may have mentioned it, but I don't remember. I'm either. happy if you want to run with it, or we can just leave that to next month. It's mm -hmm. something that we've talked about in the past. Yeah. And, you know, right. It's something we'd like to do. And uh, oh, didn't you just have a meeting? We we did. We were we really looking forward to smugly reporting that we had uploaded all the back minutes to the website. And we went and had our training with Jennifer. And then this morning I went up to Pat's house and we got out her laptop and we made because I had made sure that my Google folder was full of all the right minutes. And we did 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 did, did, did save and upload. And if you look at our website, it says the February minutes are there, but there's no minutes. It's just the title. Uh, mm -hmm. Somehow work. there's a there's a step that we miss. <laughs> Something's uh, missing. So we're gonna be on it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. on it. Yep, yep. And I'm gonna go through my folder again and make sure that they're all the update. We did the correction. Yeah. We went back through and you know, they were all the typo or whatever. Okay. Make sure yeah. So those gonna okay. be even better. We're gonna be even more smug next month. <laughs> 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 but we're not smug tonight. <laughs> well, it's fine if you're smug with pride on Pride Month. There is going to be oh, smug. Well, I'm going to be just relieved. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I've well, never done the topic of number two resources. Mm -hmm. I do remember it had we learned as a Lot of resources. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and that was one of the things was to have a hot link to them. Mm -hmm. Right. We do have a hot link to 
to have the learners. Like the, okay. uh, on our web page, mm -hmm. the minutes are going to be over on the right hand side. Our mission statement is kind of in the middle. And on the left, there's some sort of permanent links to a variety of things, including Hadley Learns. Okay. So, nice. but we could, we could, if we were, there were more worthwhile things that we wanted people to have ready access to, we could add to that mm. also. Mm -hmm. Once we actually do know how to actually do it and make it actually happen. <laughs> well, let's see, we'll put that on a we'll future agenda. We'll How's that? that on we'll, there. we'll table website, right? <laughs> we'll put it on <laughs> next month's next agenda. Week. Okay. okay. Then we can roll to follow up to six question survey from 2020 to foster connections with the various respondents, school superintendent, police chief, director of human resources. Yeah, that was following up on Joanne's six question thing, which we did way back in our first year. Oh, it was really early. Yeah. But we got some interesting, they were good questions and we got some interesting results. I think our interviews with Anna McKenzie and Mike Mason came out of that and a couple of other people. And um, right. And, and it, we met with Annie that time and she got the dashboard out on that one, I remember, mm -hmm. when she was talking about tonight. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But you'll see yeah. my letter here. I didn't get any answers from any of the faith groups. Um, I happen to list them here, but yeah. I remember this too. I remember Pat, you were going to reach, or you did, and they didn't answer or something. No, they did. They, they, did. they did. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. They did. They didn't answer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I remember the Wesley Church had things on their website they were doing, and this is where you and I had mentioned that that the senior center yeah. was having a white fragility book club. Right. That I remember all that. I got in yeah. the whole thing. It's yeah. like, wow, they are? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the senior center's response was like, oh, yes, we're dealing with diversity in this, 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 yeah. and this area. Yeah. And I'm sure the library. And the library. Too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The library. Yeah. Is true. So, yeah. yeah. It's great. So, Great to yeah. so it'd be fun to revisit those responses. Yeah. And, and yep. What are people doing now? What are people doing now? And do they know? Like, does the library know what's happening at the senior mm. center? I bet the they do. I think they, those I two. Do. I bet very, they do. And mm -hmm. the schools and the police and the, mm -hmm. you know, all the people that did respond, do they know about each other? Does Wesley United mm -hmm. know about? No, I don't think the church or the religious yeah. groups are that. They're not like that. I mean, I could be wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, and, and would there be anything that we could do as a committee to sort of say, hey, you guys over in your little cell, <laughs> which is great. Do you know about these other cells that are also mm -hmm. working? Well, it would be a really nice would thing for the World's Fair, fair right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the World's Fair has become an annual yeah, event. Right. It's a so social right. event. Mm -hmm. And that would be, it's, mm -hmm. it's maybe too late for this year, but I think extending an invitation mm -hmm. to yeah. those different groups. Different faith right. Right. Yeah. 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 And just, you know, meet and greet kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hopefully, our Zoom doesn't just click off at 8 30. Mm -hmm. uh, no. I don't think it does. But, oh, uh, let's get on it. <laughs> Uh, our last new business was ideas to expand our network with groups, schools, faith communities, et cetera, in Hadley and other local towns. And we just touched on that. Yeah. And then open agenda. Hearing no open agenda. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of full. Yes, it's been a long, yeah. been a busy night. We can move forward to closing. Um, anyone have a reflection that they would like to share? I do. I, I was very moved um, by Dr. McKenzie's description of working with um, individuals with whom she might have a difference. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. A different point of view. And I really appreciated her affirmation of parental responsibility and having openness to that. And it reminded me, her the way she spoke reminded me of a commencement address um, I heard from Liz Walker, who's the newscaster for years in the Boston area. 
who's a, a reverend now, who's a minister. And she talked about moments of grace. Mm -hmm. And I just felt a lot of grace around mm -hmm. Dr. McKenzie, just allowing allowing space for, for differences mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and bringing respect to those conversations. Mm -hmm. And I was just very mm -hmm. touched and moved by yeah, that. And too. felt so good about, about our children, mm -hmm. yeah. our Hadley children, to be in a school system mm -hmm. with a leader of mm -hmm. that caliber and sophistication. I mean, yeah. it just was beautiful, yeah. honestly. Yeah. So lucky. You know? yeah. I feel really lucky yeah. too. I mean, I, I just thought it was just wonderful to be in her presence. And then, you know, of course, to welcome Sarah to the community yeah. too, because yeah. I was remembering when we talked about um, what would happen in a school if a, if a student had a concern where would they go? Right. Mm -hmm. That was part of our conversation with Dr. McKenzie when we interviewed her. Mm -hmm. And now they're, I mean, Sarah talked about that. Mm -hmm. She's the point person. She investigates. And she yeah. investigates and she mm -hmm. has a whole system. So yeah. even in the mm -hmm. short period of time that yeah. you know we've been discussing, that's I think that's a just a leap forward. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm just feeling very inspired about. Mm -hmm.